This is the Plain English Real Estate Show with your host, Rowena Patton, a show that focuses on the real estate market in terms you can easily understand. Call Rowena now. The number is 240-9962 or 1-800-570-9962. Now here's the English girl in the mountains, the agent that I would trust, Rowena Patton. Good morning and welcome to the Real Estate News Radio Show. We have two guests in today. I'm so excited. There are vice principals of assisted living. We're going to talk about all assisted living. I've had lots of agents go, oh, well, that's not very sexy. Well, you know what? We all age and we all die. And the nice thing there is we're going to make the most of our lives and find the right places to live in, which often happens actually after holiday. So, People go through a Christmas holiday, an Easter holiday, Hanukkah holiday, all the other holidays, and the kids come home and are like, we can't deal with this anymore. We're flying back from San Francisco every time you have a heart attack or there's something going on in your life, which sounds kind of mean, doesn't it? But it's really what the kids say. We'd love to hear from you today, actually. C- can we have a caller when sure. we've got a guest? Okay. So 828-240-9962, if you're calling in from Mars, 800 800- 570-9962. We'd love to hear your experiences, being on a wait list, how long does it take, all that good good stuff. And we're talking today about steps to get on a wait list. What does that look like? We're talking about things to consider, selling your home, decluttering, all that good stuff. And also just looking at how you choose a facility. So if you have parents somewhere and you want to give them a subtle hint... Or you're thinking about it yourselves or you know somebody is. Maybe you've got friends who are thinking about it. Send them to realestatenewsradio.com, realestatenewsradio.com. There is a link there to listen anywhere, even on Mars. Just click link to listen live. This is broadcast and it is podcast afterwards, so you can always find it there too. I want to say good morning to Mike. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Mike. Mike is our VP of South Carolina. He's building out the experts there. So if you know any agents that love to work with seniors and know how to do it, we'll train them in all the rest. Go ahead, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? He's got a radio voice, hasn't he, Randy? Absolutely. Yeah, I know. That's great. We've got Renee on from California as well. Well, Tell us who you are, Mike. Oh, you just said who I was. Well, uh, come on. Hello. Uh, originally uh, born in New York, grew up in Connecticut. We, Our family moved to the South Carolina coast in Hilton Head in 77. So I've been a South Carolina coastal visitor for many years, and, and I uh, that's that's what was my interest there. I moved to Asheville in 94 after a stint in California. Back when you were 10? But, yeah, when I got into banking and real estate, and I've I guess I'm 30 years in banking and real estate now, so most mostly private finance. The conventional game got a little boring, so. But I'm looking forward to the coastal Carolinas, especially. I, I, college was University of South Carolina, Columbia, so I'm real familiar with the markets, and it's a, a one of the top retirement uh, locations in the country, just due to affordability and labor, and the coast is beautiful, and so it's gonna. We're gonna have some, have some serious beach trips. And Mike, serious beach trips are always good. I might have to come with you on those. And Mike also has, uh, is back to the connection with New York, actually, he's quite famous for being the agent on a rather f- famous building downtown that has a connection with New York. We should have done a trivia on that, Randy. So tell us about that one, Mike. Well, f- uh, first, uh, on the coastal trips, you could be my designated driver. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to need one. Um, I sold the Flatiron <laughs> Building downtown Asheville uh, right before the COVID hit, which was pretty good timing for the sellers. <laughs> I don't know about for the buyers, but they're getting ready to finally open now um, for the boutique hotel. The same group purchased the Bank America property that was already approved for a hotel. And so that area, downtown central, is really doing quite well. And the Flatiron Building in Asheville, for those people living around the country, can you just give a quick over uh, outline of what that was? It was uh, built in 1922 by L.B. Jackson and as, as a fireproof building. It's all concrete and steel and um, was offices. It was a, an incubator, almost a, a town within itself. You could go in and start off with a coffee and a haircut on the first floor and get your taxes done on the second floor and see your attorney on the third floor. It always ended up on the roof for some reason. uh, (laughs) Where uh, the roof, where at one time 
the tower for this radio station. That's right. This radio station was located. Oh where, the, where they gosh. broadcasted War of the Worlds. Exactly. All these connections, this always yeah. happens. It's, and... the, it's the vortex. We call it the vortex because it's the, the triangle. Yes. The V-shape. Yeah. It does look like the Flatiron Building in yeah. New York. And the towers on the building were actually higher than the bil- taller than the building. So the photos of the towers show an eight-story building, and the, the towers were like, 10 stories high (laughs) and you could actually hear am radio anywhere in the country from that location yeah that was in the early days of uh of am radio 570 was located there it was called uh uh may have been called wabc at the time Asheville battery company was the uh wow uh, we've got some of the old photos of the shows and the band they used to bring the bands up there yeah it was live music (laughs) so um Bonus points if you can say who wrote Concrete and Clay and what year it was released. <laughs> it was one of the number ones the year I was born. How about that? You, you just dated me yourself, baby. Our sweetest roses in the morning. And on that note, we should go over to Renee. How are you, Renee? Good morning. I'm great. How are you guys today? Good morning. Thank you for being part of our fun and crazy show it's always a fun and crazy show because we like it that way introduce yourself darling you have been the most amazing yeah. vp already in the first two weeks of launching assistedliving.com so introduce yourself tell us where you are and thank you for getting up early in the morning yeah no problem thank you for that by the way um i'm renee gallegos and i'm actually representing the west coast today i am located just a little bit south of san jose a beautiful location. Um, I'm so blessed to be able to live where I live. But I too, just like Mike, have moved around the country. I am originally from the Midwest. I was from Southern, I'm from Southern Illinois and then moved up to the Chicago area. And then at that time got a job offer in Hawaii. So I love the beach and decided to jet set off to Hawaii and then had the reality of um, the cost of living in Hawaii, I was actually a teacher at the time. That's where I started my career and then decided that um, I needed to do something different and moved to California, started out in Southern California, had a relative there. So went there and as such, when I jumped into the real estate industry, started um, also in <clears throat> banking, just like you, Mike, and then transitioned into new home sales and now um, over the years, I've moved to Northern California and am doing real estate and assist, working with seniors on assisted living. And a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me today. It Anna. is a thrill. And for those of you listening around the country or in other countries, we have other countries listening too, you are about 50 miles away from San Francisco, something like that. Yeah, Exactly. So um, about an hour. It takes me an hour to get to San Francisco or to the airport, which is a little bit south of the city. Got it. Okay, because you know, not not everybody knows where. Yes. It is. See, I know it's hard to place it if you're not familiar. And you're southeast. Is that right? South. I have to do it with my hands because you know. No, just straight south. Just, just straight, straight south. south. You okay. take the 101. Those of, the, those of you who are familiar, there's a highway that just like in most states that runs north and south. You just go on the highway south, and there you are. I'm- cool. Cool. Okay, so what we're talking yeah. about today is assisted living, and let's kick it off with, um, you know, the wait list, steps to get on the wait list. So what do we mean about a wait list, Renee? For, for those people who are who, – maybe it's the kids uh, – kids, it's kind of funny, they're 50 and 60-year-olds who are thinking of helping their parents right now. And, of course, it is a holiday weekend. Happy Easter, everybody. And um, often kids are going home for the holidays. Kids, the 50 and 60 year olds are going to visit their parents. And they might be in a situation whereby the last time they went uh, to visit them on a holiday time, they realized they needed a bit more help or they've been going back frequently to see them or they may even be in a different state. So, Renee, you know about this in terms of being on a wait list how long do you think, yes. on average, are people on a wait list to get into a facility? You know, it really varies by the location and where you are and the city in which you live. 
So it, there are some facilities that don't have a wait list at all, but that can change quite rapidly. And there are others where wait lists can be over a year or more. Mm-hmm. So it varies quite a lot. So if you think you're going to have a need, it's, it pays to start thinking about it early, not at the last minute when you need it. Um, there, it's interesting to know, I actually did a little bit of research um, on this. There are 30,000 facilities across the U.S. and only 1.2 million licensed beds. And they said that the growth for this industry of assisted living is going to grow 4% annually. So there's more and more wow. seniors. As the baby boomers start to age, Yes, we know that the demand for these facilities are going to increase. So I suspect that over the years that the wait lists are going to start to get longer. Well, and the start of the boomers too is 59. So already, you know, that those that's the youngest boomer now. So obviously, as we go 10 years ahead, we're at 69. So 10 years time, that will be the end of the boomers. And, uh, you know, the, there's, I think, more way more boomers than, than any other de- demographic. So... It's no wonder it's growing yeah, at that rate. Yeah, they're about double of what the Gen Xs are. Wow, gosh. So start yeah, the research now population. is the point because you could easily be on the wait list for two years, three years, you know, four years. Sometimes it requ- for the better ones require a deposit. Um, sometimes the, the deposit is refundable. Sometimes it's applied to future costs. We, we may not know what those future costs are in five years, so, you know, plan ahead and, and start researching and visiting those. We are going to have a huge resource coming up here, really, in the next 90 days. But being realistic, within six months, we'll have a map of the country with these facilities on it all over the country. So anywhere your parents might want to go, we're going to have a, a huge map. Because if you're the kids, you may want them by you, but they may not want to be by you. So those are some big conversations to have. You know, do you still want to fly out and be with them? Um, I I know I have a good friend whose parents were in Florida and they were continually, the kids were kids. I mean, we're all in our 50s, right? So the kids were coming from Black Mountain or uh, Maryland. Or, of course, if there's more than one kid, they're coming from all different places back down to Florida and now they're in Charleston with one of the kids, one of the kids who's 59, <laughs> in a facility uh, there so that at least that's a sort of centralized location. One of the kids lives there and the other three are scattered around. One's in Black Mountain, one is in Pennsylvania and one is in Maryland, oh, Florida actually now. So, you know, it's a centralized location where at least one of the kids is there and can go and visit them on a regular basis so all the siblings can fight over who's going to visit you know oh my gosh so there's a lot to do there and then the assessment piece so so facilities usually require an assessment so obviously that's about the level of care needed you'll fill out the application have you ever known anybody that's gone through this mike i mean obviously you've worked with a lot of seniors I made the uh, great mistake of calling my company Estate Realty at one point, and it was like, oh, my God, I I ended up with all these estate deals. And between keeping the family at bay and communicating, um, everyone gets on everyone's nerves at some point. Of course. The the big panic was the folks waiting for – I won't mention any facilities, but when their name came up on the waiting list, they had 90 days to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars to secure their position, or they were out – and if that didn't give them a stroke, then they had to they had to sell the house as quickly as possible. And if that didn't kill them, they both made it into the facility, and half the time one has ended up making it within a yeah. year. So it, it was a very stressful situation, not just for them, of course, but for the family. And the kids are generally in their sixties at that point, or and so I think having the reverse mortgage business certainly helped out a good bit. But when they need that bulk of money they don't have time to sell the house and that's the that's the mm-hmm. big, that's where this really fits a niche I, I love this niche because i don't i don't know of a better program that'll transition them without all that stress and we're talking about assisted living cpo and you can go to assistedlivingcpo.com for uh, more information just rem- remember assisted living and then put cpo like certified pre-owned after it 
Um, it is all based on the cash CPO program. So we can go in and within 12 days have 70% of the funding out to the seniors. And I can hear you saying, well, they need more than 70%. That's just a regular cash offer. That's not what this is. So we can get them the majority of their equity very quickly, which will get them into the assisted living facility. And then we go in and we do everything from um, a, a, just a deep clean to paint the walls, to put new countertops on, to put a new roof on if need be. Basically spending the money up front to, um, you know, decluttering, obviously getting all the furniture out, spending the money up front to maximize the profit on the house. But here's the good news. The vast majority of the profit goes back to the seniors. So two thirds of our sellers get more than they would with a traditional listing. The difference is they get the the big chunk of money first, which gets them into the facility without having to use their payment plans and pay the extra money per month, as well as having no showings. I mean, imagine this couple tends to be in their 70s, 80s, 90s even maybe, and then you've got kids in their 70s dealing with it. Imagine that. So you've got a, you know, you've got a couple or a single person, maybe with a little dog. You've often got a little dog, and now you've got showings. That means you get a text on your phone. You know, how many people have parents of that age group even have texts? They might have a flip phone, or they don't want to deal with texts. And then <laughs> Mike's making the rotary phone on <laughs> in the background there. It's radio, so you can't see it, but you can see it on you can see it on the video on YouTube. So, um, you know, it's very difficult to, to keep the house clean. So now you've got a little dog and you do all your, you know, you're, you're at home all day. So you've got your jigsaw and you've got your, you know, what do you do when you're at home all day and you're retired? You don't know, Mike, because you'll never, you'll never retire. Watch Oprah. Watch Oprah. Is that what you do? You watch Oprah. Your, your heat's up to 76. <laughs> Right, we all know we've you've got your heat up very high. Your little dog's running around. Might have done a poop in the corner, and you might not have noticed it. And um, you know you've cooked your bacon that morning. <laughs> I mean, come on, describe your grandparents' house. Everybody think of their grandparents' house. Go for it, Renee. Let me hear what your grandparents' house was like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the old shaggy carpet. The. Uh... Just, the fat pan. Thinking, I mean, they had an old farmhouse that um, just hadn't been updated in many years. The Formica countertop, the old um, 1960 appliances that just avocado worked well enough. What color were they? Yep. <laughs> Mustard. Um, gold. Gold. Yep. The Harvest, gold. Harvest gold. Harvest yeah. gold. Yeah. Randy, yeah, the, Randy the producer, too. always yeah. knows the names. It's so funny. I like the orange countertops. <laughs> the orange yeah. countertops. Yeah. With little bit. Do you know what that was called? So another bonus point. Can anybody name what the pattern? I had to research this. What the pattern was called on the dining table. It had a little loopy pattern on it. You remember that? And the countertops had them too. It's called boomerang. They're actually little <laughs> boomerangs. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yeah, that's true. Never would have guessed that. I know. No, me I know. Another piece of useless my, trivia. My favorite was doilies. Doilies? Yeah. Doilies. Doily. Handmade doilies. Oh, yes. Yeah. Doilies. My, fa- the, my favorite was the... plastic on the couch because the grandkids, oh, yeah. were, grandkids the were coming over. <laughs> and the mints that nobody would eat. <laughs> what kind of mints were that? Oh, yes. Green no, mints. Uh, yeah, yeah. Green mints? They show up at Easter this <laughs> really? weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I'm you know I grew up in a different country. I don't know about the green mints. I love learning these things. This is the the piece of life that's so important to everybody, right? So, the, so for me, it was the fat pan. They always had a fat pan that they kept on the stove. The bacon grease. The bacon grease, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Or oil or whatever. Or, or it was lard actually in England. Yeah. It was lard. So they'd melt a big block of lard and they'd cook cook anything: beef burgers, lamb yeah. chops, fries, of course. You- you would I don't not know. want to subject that to Yeah, testing. but it would sit there. Yeah. It would sit there I for like, like six months. I don't know how long it was sitting there. I remember but guess the, what? I, None of us die. It stayed there all the time. I remember the smell of cigars when he walked in my grandfather's house. <laughs> there oh, you yeah. go. Yeah. It's uh, that the smells mm-hmm. are so evocative. Your grandfather's well. pipe. Yeah. Oh, your your grandfather had a pipe? Yes. Wow. His pipe and pie were his two things. 
pie. Pie. What yeah. kind of pie? Pie's at Randy's oh, thing too. He likes apple, apple pie. pie yeah. What kind of pie did your grandfather Rhubarb like? Pie, Rhubarb pie. Rhubarb. Rhubarb pie. Mm-hmm. Rhubarb's okay if you put it with cherries. Tastes, and it tastes like cherry. I, maybe they always did cherries. They though. did cherries yeah. because it's so sour and nasty. Yeah, I agree. That's why. <laughs> I don't like rhubarb. <laughs> yeah, I never acquired a taste for it either. Ugh. But and gooseberries. <laughs> Ugh. Mm-hmm. Rhubarb. Ugh. Gosh. So, you know, <laughs> let's face it when we get, or at least um, maybe it's a generational thing, but I suspect we'll do all those things when we're older too. Um, I've kind of missed the fat pan, honestly, but anyway, gave it a lot more flavor. All, all the scratchings in the bottom. Oh. Bacon, bacon. And beef burgers. What do we call beef burgers? Patties. Smashed burgers. 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 Yeah, they, whatever. So they'd cook sausages in there. They cook up, And all you did is heat it at the fat every time. And it just yeah. sat yeah. there. So eggs as well. You know about eggs? Yeah, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. So when when you were in that generation, <laughs> eggs stayed out. But do you know why they stayed out? So if anybody gives you eggs directly from the farm... They've um, never been refrigerated. And they haven't been refrigerated, but there's something else. There's a coating called the bloom on them. So what people do, when, when you get eggs that your friend gives you, and they've got a few feathers and a bit of chicken shit on them... Oh! Oh, I said it. He's beeping me. That's hilarious. He's trying to beat me out. So um, when, when it's got that on it, don't wash them. And here's why. You wash them right before you choose to eat them. It's called a bloom, and that's what keeps them fresh. So you don't have to refrigerate them. The reason we have to... He's bleeped me out. I can't believe it. Did you really bleep me I out? Can't, that, you can't do that. Okay. Yeah. So we have to say it again? No, don't say it again. No, I mean... Don't. Chicken poop. I can there say chicken poop. You can get away so with the that. chicken poop and the feather on the egg. I don't think I've ever been bleeped out in twelve years. So yeah, that was good going. Did. Wow. Congratulations. Gosh. <laughs> Amazing. So chicken poop and a feather on the egg. Your friends has given them given them to you. Don't wash them. That's what keeps them fresh and keep them out of the fridge. You don't want them in the fridge. Um, and they taste way better. It's called the bloom. Just keep it on there. And that's, you know, older people, again, have, have those egg things, the ceramic things that you put the eggs in. It's got a little chicken on top, you know, I'm talking yeah. about. So to sell the house, we really need to um, make it not only applicable to seniors, we need to make it applicable to young people as well and everybody in between. So we prob you know, having the little dog there and having the cat litter trays and having the jigsaws on the table and the fat pan on the stove and the pipes and the cigarettes and the what else that we just talked about. The the beautiful cotton doilies, the doily nets, I always love that too, or the fluffy palmets. So you know, when when you're a bit older, you tend to have... I'm sorry if you're listening at home and you're looking up at your palmets right now. <laughs> Turning off the radio. The, the, yeah, really. The, it's like, wait, i got the fat pan. I've got the <laughs> smoke in my pipe. <laughs> well, I think the big thing is having the inspections ready where someone of comes course. in and you're making the process just seamless versus a nightmare. There's of course. There's a big, big difference between the two. Mike's so like me, he gets straight to the point, except... I'm trying to set, I'm trying to be different to how I normally am and actually I think everyone's groundwork. house is beautiful. You just got to see through the junk. Of course. And the fluffy palmets at the top of the window, people don't tend to have those anymore. It's not in style now. It was in style like 30 years ago. Um, sometimes you've got fringes on them and your curtains go underneath the palmets, if you know what I'm talking about. How about all the wallpaper, the old wallpaper? The wallpaper, the s- Yes. The fuzzy stuff. The wo- oh, what's that called? <laughs> With the paisley, the, flock. the paisley fuzzy stuff. Flock, that's called. It's collectible now. <laughs> yes. Or maybe you've got the sponging from the 80s that was so popular on the walls. Yeah. Yeah. Or I don't know, Ren- Renee, what else do you see <clears throat> when you go into the, those homes? You know, the tech carpet, um, you know, sometimes also the medications, a oh, lot of times yes. there'll be medications. And that's something that um, I don't know if you've heard, but a lot of people will go to open houses just to look in the medicine cabinets to see what medications people have. To steal them. Um, Not because mm-hmm. they're nosy to steal them. Oh, yeah. People will actually go to uh, look at houses to steal the medications. And they do it in 50 plus communities as well so be really careful with that if you're listing your home of course 
Um, if you don't want to list your home, you can do cash CPO. We'll give you a full market value cash offer. And you don't have to go through all of that because this cash offer doesn't just work for assisted living. It works for anything. You'll get 70% or thereabouts within 12 days. And then you can leave your home. You can stay there for up to 90 days. We should mention that as well in case you want to take time finding something else. And then we'll, obviously, it's just like a normal purchase. We'll move all of your furniture out. We will put new countertops in if necessary. There's a lot of homes, whether, you know, the couple's going into assisted living or not, whereby the the home has maybe been built in the 60s or 70s, and those people have lived there the whole time, or maybe they're the second owners. And there's a home next door that's selling for 850 and we know we can only list theirs for... 550 because it's not updated the difference is we can go in using our funding partners money you'll get six, maybe 60 percent out because it's a lot of work this time you'll get 60 percent out of the 550 and then we'll go in and spend the 100,000 200,000 300,000 and we'll increase it to the 850 that you could have gotten and we're only spending 100,000 so the profit the vast majority, of course, they charge a fee because money isn't free. However, the profit goes back to you. Two thirds of our sellers get more. So if you're thinking about selling your house right now, for whatever reason, whether you're going into assisted living or anything else, check out cpoexperts.com. CPO, that's certified pre owned, cpoexperts.com. You'll find all of these options in there. And, and also, um, from the from the build the team point of it for the real estate folks that I'm looking for in the South Carolina, look at the difference between listing a home with an aged couple in it and doing the transaction and moving them out and then having to have the home cleaned up anyway to put on the market and the extra work versus the other option where it closes, they have their funds, they move out, the team comes in, prepares the property, inspects it, and puts it on the market – the difference in work for the agent is 70% less yes. complicated yes. and stressful. So so the folks the folks looking on the real estate end of it that want to get on the team need to let us know because it's a whole different process. Different world, yeah. And we, So we launched right. CPO Experts back in 2007. We've been training agents to do this to help sellers since 2007. Last year, we came across this funding partner that will now pay for all of this for you. We used to do it where, where you as the seller paid for the inspection. You as the seller paid for the appraisal. You don't have to do that anymore. They will provide the money up front to do that. When we do the inspection, you've got a certified pre-owned home. I, I can't stress the importance of this enough. That's why 2007, that's a little while ago. That's why I've been doing it since then because I couldn't understand why sales were falling apart. Over a third of contracts fall apart. You're, you're an agent, Mike. You, I mean, how many do you think fall apart? Since COVID, I probably did the work of 40 transactions, and I think maybe a third of them closed. Uh, wow. Gosh. The fallout was huge. And you're a really, really experienced mm-hmm. agent. And so it was, that's no, an it was normally number. property conditions or lending. Of course. so Or neighbors. Or, or neighbors, of course. So there's always that. Or <laughs> buyers go out and lease a car or something. What would you say, Renee? Obviously, you're a seasoned agent as well. Do you think that's a realistic figure that at least a third fall out? Absolutely. And as the agent, you're doing the same amount of work, whether it goes through as a deal or it doesn't. And that's no, I said a third closed. Your life. I know. Yeah. There's a lot of work. Absolutely. Yeah. And, it's the same amount of work whether the deal closes or it doesn't close. And, let's, and you only get paid as an agent if it closes. Well, let's take And the, I think that's something that the public doesn't always see. That another said, how much, look how much money you made. I go, you didn't see the four that didn't close. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's take it back to the sellers <laughs> exactly. for a second because who cares about us agents who are listening, you know? Let's take it back to the sellers. If you're selling your home, then, uh, yeah, of course we all do. I mean, however, if you're selling your home and at least a third to two thirds of the time, the contract's going to fall apart. So you're going to be very excited, especially at those higher price points or especially if your home needs some work. You know, your home isn't the stellar CPO home that is out there that's the best home on the market other than next to a new home. And we can even compete with new homes with this process. 
So you're a seller. You don't have a CPO home. You haven't gone with a CPO team around the country. We've got them all for you, by the way. Um, and now you're listing your home. So finally, you get this offer come in because it is not the market from two years ago. Trust me, where we're getting multiple offers and things are flying out the door the next day. That isn't happening now almost everywhere in the country. Um, there is a place in Alaska where that is still happening. It's not Fairbanks. It's the other one. What's the other one in Alaska? Anchorage. Anchorage, Anchorage is still. Anchorage. Yeah, Anchorage is still multiple offers the last time I checked. Very, very few places in the country are multiple offer situations right now. So you finally get the offer. Yay! We can go into our assisted living. We can move to be by the grandkids in LA. We can finally retire in Aruba. We we can finally get our bigger house because we have a child on the way. We can finally right size or downsize, it used to be called. Um, you know, what are, what are the other reasons are that we, we're getting a divorce? Finally, we can move on with our lives. What other reasons are they? Our partner's died. Our, our house is full of memories, and we can't wait to leave this behind, especially if they're bad Relo- memories. Relocation? Re- I'm relocating. I've got a new job. That house is just sitting there. Like, it's terrible. Right. Or- so, so finally, you are able to get this offer come in. The offer comes in, and what I mean by it falling out is it goes under contract, the inspections are done, the the most often the buyers are getting the appraisal so they can get their mortgage and that is all going on and the buyers do the inspections the average inspection has 40 to 50 items on it if you are in a location where somebody is moving from somewhere else very common 60 to 70 percent renee how many people in your market in in san jose california are moving from somewhere else into san jose what, 50%, uh, 20%? Um, I would say maybe 10%. 10%, okay, because everybody's leaving California. Yeah, yeah. I hate to say it. Well, because of remote, things aren't, people aren't moving around quite as much because of the remote work now. Yes, that's very true. Um, most of our agents across the country have got 50, 60, 70% of people coming from elsewhere. When you're coming from elsewhere and you don't necessarily necessarily know the market, so it may be they're moving out from San Francisco to San Jose. Would that be fair? Less expensive, more um, house. Sometimes I, we get a lot of people moving from the city, moving more to more rural, or moving still on the peripherals of the city. Okay, is what we find. Okay, so they don't know your market because they're an hour away, and it's already nerve wracking. They're moving out of the big city. Finally, they've made this decision. So you present them with a list of repairs, 40 or 50 repairs. That's adding to the stress of moving. It's very, very stressful. Most buyers can, and it's all dependent on how good your agent is, right? So most buyers look at that list and they're like, ah! How many times have you gone through that, Mike, with with a buyer that looks at Never. the list? Never. <laughs> You've been in real estate for, what, 30 years? I, I just look at the summary page, and this, the inspection report's like 40 pages, and they put a camera in the chimney, and, and uh, you look at the summary, and you're like, all right, that's like two months' worth of work, three months' worth of work. Yes, yeah. <laughs> how are we going to mm-hmm. close this next month? Yes, exactly. But how do the buyers react? Have you ever had buyers freak out? You're very calming, so and you're very experienced, so you sitting with a buyer and talking them through it is a whole different thing to an agent that got their real estate license last week. Have you ever had buyers freak out about the inspection? Sure, sure. Very frequently, uh, right, when they first look at it. You take out all the non-peripheral and then you just deal on any major issues. Of course, of course. And then, of course, the broker and the brokers have to figure out how to make it work. Yes. Renee, have you ever had buyers freak out on on inspection reports? They have. They have, and in our market, it's pretty competitive, so um, sellers are not necessarily wanting to put extra money in their house, and so the buyers, there's kind of this standstill because the buyers want the sellers to fix everything, and sellers just say, nope, take it as is, and so then you have to go to negotiations back and forth, and that's where it gets to be stressful, and a lot of buyers just don't have the patience for it because they are wanting, like you said, a certified pre-owned home, something like that. Yes, because they want everything to be perfect. Well, in a seller's in, market, in a seller's it. market, you can do that. But <clears throat> when you're not in a seller's market, you got to do everything they want. So we're transitioning now. Uh, even though our our region in, in the Asheville area is is still a pretty strong seller's market, but 
buyers coming in or they want what they want and it's not the seller's market it was yeah. so now you've got to do a lot more to close those deals mm-hmm. and how much mm-hmm. does it cost to certify pre-own it even if you do it yourself so if you don't want to work with us in the wnc area or mike in south carolina or any of the other we've got 1100 agents who know how to do this around the country right now i can find you an agent that can do it and even if you don't want to work with an agent and get a full market value cash offer not have to go through all the pain in the butt of listing your house and getting your dog out and the kids out and your spouse out and everything else (laughs) putting the locking the spouse in the in the closet while the showings are going on and you're still going to get a large number of showings in most places right now because of the lack of inventory there aren't many homes out there that's really what's keeping the the prices strong if you don't want to deal with that then just go ahead and and why wouldn't you get a cash offer at this point I, i i know if i was selling my house i would definitely look at this it doesn't cost you anything to get a cash offer and it's a full market value yeah. cash offer. Why wouldn't you look at it? It doesn't make any sense to me, honestly. I, I mean, I am sound like I'm selling it, but honestly, it doesn't make any sense to me why you would do it any other way. Because when you have it, let's say you don't want to do that. Fine. Okay. You just want to, you know, take your chances on the open market. Certify pre-own your house. Get the inspection. Maybe you're selling for sale by owner. Get the inspection. 450 Most market. How much are yours, Renee, over in California? Our have our home prices no, are inspections. average around your inspections. Oh, the inspections, yeah, anywhere depending on the size of the home, but um, they can be upwards of six hundred dollars. Okay, so four hundred, six hundred dollars. It's an insurance policy. You do that, and you know, sellers sellers always say to me at almost all of my listings as CPA. I've been doing it for, since two thousand and seven. Sellers say, "Well, don't the buyers pay for that?" Absolutely, but guess what? Then you're under contract. So you go under contract within two weeks with cash CPO or assisted living CPO. You're going to have that inspection done within days. They're amazingly fast. I don't know how they do it, honestly. So the inspection come back in days. But here's the problem. When the average buyer out there, 14 days into the contract or 10 days or seven days or whatever it is, is doing the inspection, you're under contract. And you have to use almost everywhere in the country a licensed contractor to put all those things right. You do it ahead of time, maybe you're a little bit handy. Mike would do most of it himself, right? You'd fix all the things that came up on the inspection report. Whatever whatever I could, yeah. Right, so here's the difference. When you have a certified pre-owned home, you are going to give that inspection to the buyers or the buyer's agent, whomever, that is wanting to put a contract in. So if they put an offer in, you're gonna give them the inspection report. Everybody just, falls off their chair at this or oh, then they won't buy it because there's all these things wrong with it there's always things wrong with a house and maybe you've put a bunch of them right and notated the inspection report when everybody goes in with honesty and eyes wide open it changes everything i've never had somebody pull out when we give them the contract what were you going to say mike you said something interesting that <clears throat> there was a confidence level difference when you give them the report there's a lot more trust from the seller side to the buyers than there is when they have their own people come out and then you've that's why you've got the buyer agency conflicts well of course they, that's where they tend to occur but when you're handing them a report they're going oh well they're giving us yes and you so agents out there sellers out there don't let your house go under contract without giving the buyers that inspection report don't be scared it's going to scare them off guess what in seven to 10 days, they're going to get something that's going to scare them off anyway. But A, it won't scare them off, most likely because they're like, oh, well, these people are honest and they fixed all these things on here. We know what's going on. And the, there's a whole trust level that's completely different. But don't go under contract. Here's why. You go under contract and then they do the inspection. And remember, a third to two thirds of them now we're hearing from Mike, who's a very experienced agent have been dropping out, that the contract drops out. So you're under contract with the buyer, and then it drops out, usually because of the inspection, sometimes because of the appraisal now, because homes aren't appraising, right? So they're dropping out. Those are the two primary reasons, probably 90% of the time, why they drop out. You can take that off the table. Why is that important? When it drops out, we've got what's called a stigmatized listing. What's a, what's a stigmatized listing? So, Renee, have you ever had one fall out and then everybody and their dog calls you? Why to fall out? Yeah. (laughs) What's wrong with it? Sorry, (laughs) Renee. Yeah. No, no, go for it. 
Mike signed, sounded. Um, uh, no, Renee the first, thing, the first thing they want to know is what happened. Yeah. What happened? What yeah. happened? What's yeah. what? So I, another thing is when you do the inspections on it, you have you have the corrections made. So when they, when they enter a transaction, the buyers usually one foot out the door. Just anything can set them off. So there were no. They're worried about the radon. They're worried about the water quality. They're worried about lead based paint. I mean, the, the list is endless. So if you can cure most of that before the transaction occurs, then they can tend to come in with two feet in. So it's a lot harder for them to, they're they're ready to jump ship. Most buyers are extremely nervous anyway, because it's a stressful process. They're living, they've already sold their place. They're waiting for that to close or they're, or they're, or they're gypsies waiting for something else. That would be me. (laughs) Yeah. Waiting, waiting on my next house. I'm actually moving next week. Finally, I've been a gypsy for three months now. Not fun. I'm wearing the, I've learned to dress in three different outfits. It's not fun. I can't find anything. I think you're having some fun. It's it's. I'm actually having. I, I am having fun because I've learned to to live with it. But it's it's not fun. It really isn't. I mean, there's a lot, mainly for things you can't find, and it's just. I don't know. You feel displaced, and it's not. It's very stressful. Especially when you have pets. Especially when you have pets. Yeah, little Sophie doesn't know. Yes. Yes. You know, it's wherever she lays her hats, her home or her kids beds, her home or kids. Yeah, imagine with doing that with kids or. Somebody that's disabled, maybe like it's not. Yeah, it's not good at all. Um, so you know they're already going through that stress. So of course, when that comes in, and there's a reason why. And you know, I got the idea from certified pre-owned cars, CPO cars. Every dealership has one. CarMax, that's a CPO dealership. Basically, everything's been inspected. Everything's been put right. They offer a dealership warranty. Right? There's a reason why people pay six percent more for those cars. And when I got into real estate and in, in 2006 and I saw all these deals falling apart, I just didn't understand. So, again, we have, a, we have a car. You know, CPO in cars has been around for 50 years, probably longer than that. We, ha- we have a $20,000 car that's been certified pre-owned and we'll pay 6% more for it. And yet we have a $500,000 house. In those days here, it was 176000 was our median price point. Now it's five twenty five. Uh, just this short time, time later. We, we have a you know $500,000 house that we put on the market, no inspections. This is insanity. I think it's insanity. And now we've found a way for you as a seller to have it paid for. Um, and, uh, you know, we have all of these uh, different ways to use this. And, of course, today we've been talking about assisted living. When you're getting to that stage, we can give you a full market value cash offer that you can put in your back pocket. Now, will it change in six months when you finally get that call? We're ready to go. Possibly because of what the market's doing. You know, the market's flattening out a little bit now. Um, but g- just get that offer now. We're, we're not, we're, you know, at least you've got an idea of where you're at and it will be the full market value of your home. That means we've made that contact, we've seen your house, all of that stuff takes time. We can come in, at least assess what we could do to make the most money for you. So what do we need to do? Do we need to paint the walls? Do we need to do a deep clean? Do we need to put new flooring down? Um, you know, do you have two or three different types of flooring? Do you have laminate and carpet and tile in your house? We'll probably, you know, redo the flooring throughout. Do you have popcorn on the ceilings? Do you have old fans? And are there homes in, in your neighborhood, which there probably are at this point, that have been remodeled that are selling for fifty, a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand dollars more? The the other thing with this uh program that you've you've created and and obviously backed is that we're evaluating the numbers on the property before we even go in. So uh, your average broker comes in or your realtor comes in and says, okay, these are the comps. We feel that this is the top value. They'll tend to overprice the property in order to get the listing, first of all, because they're, they're there to get the listing. And then there'll be price adjustments if it's too high. Well, we're coming in and evaluating, here's what you've gotten, here's what it needs, and this is what we can get. So you're getting all that up front 
So we're not going in blindly and just saying, let's just overprice it to get the listing. To get the listing, yeah. We're, we're, we're saying, this is where you're at, so if that doesn't work for you, we understand. Yeah. But, and then some, if a broker comes in later and, and just overprices and it sits, then they're going to go, you know, we should have listened. There's always that There's always that in between. There's a difference between somebody blindly listing versus a company coming in and we're looking at the real numbers. Cause you're right. Because we're, we're forecasting the next six months to t- out, out as far as best we can, not just getting a sign in the yard. Right. And the great thing is, it's a really good point. And the great thing is, we're, so there are people out there right now saying, my house is perfectly maintained. It, we already remodeled the kitchens and the, and the baths. I promise you, when we do that inspection, we're going to find 40 to 50 items. I should lay a bet on this, honestly, because it, I, I don't remember the last time. Do, you, do either of you remember, Renee or Mike, the last time you saw an inspection report without 40 items on it? New construction. New construction, but it's still going to have 25, 30 items on yeah, it. But not 40, yeah. But not 40. I'm just saying that's the cleanest I've yes. seen. Yes. Outside of new construction, yeah. do you remember anything that's had less than 40 items? No, because it's every little window latch, yeah. and a loose yeah. screw. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It is, mm-hmm. except when a buyer looks at that, you know, and as a seller, you go, oh, well, that's nothing. You know, it's easy to fix, right? You can hear them saying it. Mike's laughing because he can hear them saying it. That's exactly what you say as sellers. That's nothing. That's stupid. And, the, you know, nothing on there is, is cosmetic. It's all things that need fixing. And buyers don't want to come in and fix anything. And you, you as the seller don't have to fix it. We can disclose it. However, with this program, we're going to come in and fix everything, right? So that will all be fixed. And, and even if you've got a well-maintained, you know, remodeled, you think it's just swanky pants, best thing since sliced bread, then we'll find things in there where we can put some money in and, quite frankly, get you out. Because when you've got a home that's what we call a show-and-go, you're not in there. It's not all about your logistics. Are you home from work? Have you, do you need to take the dog out? You know, I love the sellers who say, yeah, but my dog's really friendly. He'll just be really friendly. Wait, you've had that, right? <laughs> He'll just be really friendly. Don't worry. And then you come in as the agent with your buyers, and it's like, Arr! And this dog's barking at you the whole time. And quite frankly... Who's even your if, lawyer? Even if they are friendly. The, the, the other problem is if someone's in a house and they want it to look good... They're getting out. If, if, if they have, want to make their house look good to sell and, and they need new flooring, what are you going to do? You, you can't you can't take everything out of the house and do the flooring and put it back in. Right. It's just, it looks horrible. Yeah. It's going to look horrible. It smells horrible. Yeah. And, and carpet is history i swear nobody wants anyone else's carpet anymore. very true most people don't want their own carpet never mind somebody my else's. parents had a house one time with with a six inch shag carpet it came with a rake <laughs> did it really yes <laughs> you're serious they, have a, they yeah. have a shag carpet rake is that a real thing <laughs> yeah. i've seen it on studio walls from the 60s and radio stations it had oh. more smoke in it than you know a van <laughs> oh so some things you can't just correct with them there. So it, it's just a whole different, whole different concept. Yeah. So you know, yeah. even if you do have what you think is a perfect house, this still works for you. Our funding company has been doing this since 2017. They've never not sold a house, and they buy flips all the time. I uh, homes that have already been remodeled all the time. Just get you that money out fast. We do it for short term rentals as well. So if you you're maybe a short term rental owner. You know, you've got a house. You don't want that sign outside because people are renting and or you just got a rental house. You don't want the sign outside because you don't want your renters to know that you're selling it. We can buy it um, and you can then give your renters notice. And now you're not paying the mortgage anymore, you know, with no sign or anything else. We just make it easy for you. It's just a much, much, much easier way to sell a house. You get your money out much faster and we can maximize what you get for that house. That's the key thing. So like Mike was saying, many agents go in and they, they do what we call buy the listing, which is they'll price it high. Usually the seller will go with the person that will price it the highest because they think they're going to make more money. Whereas that's not really the case. It needs to be market value because you really want two or three offers coming in at the same time. So you've got some bargaining power and often it will actually bid up at that point. If you put it on too high, your first 14 to 30 days are so important when you when you list your house, especially now because it should be selling more quickly still. You don't want to burn that time with your, your house priced too high. 
So just get us to do a cash offer. That's a, you know, we, we get requests for cash offers or what, what are called CMAs, comparable markets. Overpricing market. it also increases the fallout percentage. What's that mean? Mm-hmm. It, it means that folks will put it under contract immediately to tie it up uh, and then feel they're paying too much for it when, yes. they, when they do their homework and then they'll back out. And then another Because they're, they're under up. due diligence period, so they can walk unless there's a, a big due diligence fee. Yes. We're not seeing due diligence fees like we were during COVID, that's for sure. That's a very good point. So the fallout rate, you know, so yes, you know, because there isn't much inventory around, buyers feel like they need to lock up the house and, you know, put the, they can put $500 down in due diligence or nothing. You can put zero down, tie so up the house. My last four sales, I, I told the sellers, I said, it's not a matter of selling it, it's who we sell it to. So it's getting the right buyer on right. the contract. So we're right. more shopping. We're shopping for buyers as much as we are just a buyer. We're shopping for the strongest buyer because if the house needs work, you don't want a VA buyer or FHA because they're going to tear you up on the appraisals. So we we want to get the right buyer with the most down that's qualified. Yeah, so. not that we can't help those VA or FHA buyers as well, of course. No, absolutely. But the, the house right has home. to be has to, to be for this program. Certified the house pre-owned. Has, yep. Yeah, we can buy it through the CPO program and get it to a place where we can do those VA and yeah. FHA loans. I hadn't even thought of it like that. You just brought They're in. They're doing 100% financing right now yeah. in conventional. Yes. I mean, I've never seen that. And they will do it because now we've got this basically perfect home. I mean, they're never perfect, right? But almost perfect home. The the CPO homes have the cleanest, ins- if they choose to have their own inspector, which you know we often recommend, it's going to be the cleanest inspection anybody's ever seen. That's what the buyer – and buyer agents love to show your CPO home. Why? Because a third to two-thirds of the time, that deal's going to fall apart with a regular old home that hasn't been – you know, it's like buying a car off, off Craigslist. That's a, a le- Yeah, exactly. I, I, I wish I could show you what Mike's doing right now. Oh, you really don't want to do that anymore. Most of us will pay the few percent extra – to buy that certified pre-owned car because you don't want to buy a lemon. Same with a CPO home. So most of your agents don't do that. Oh. Thought I'd bring a little class. Some world-class stuff there. What's who's that? <laughs> world-class stuff here. That's beautiful. I think that song's called Summertown. <laughs> oh, stop. And there's clouds around. <laughs> You're I'm in trouble. You are so in trouble. That's so pretty. It's <laughs> great music, man. In your bio, I read you are a fan of uh, Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra, and I said, I gotta play this guy's music. We speak the same I language. I like all the classics. They, the, the Great American Songbook. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you could see my. So, so doesn't he? He sounds like I just realized he sounds like Sting as well. He sounds like a cross between Sting and Neil Diamond. Sounds really good. Paybacks. <laughs> I'll let you so, guys close out the show here. Renee, that that was Mike on, on the piano. He's a very accomplished pianist. It's amazing. Ah, I was wondering what was going on. That's, she, she's in trouble. I, apparently, I'm in a lot of trouble. So, so close us out, Renee. From I mean, what time is it over there now? You're not too bad at this point, thank goodness. It's almost eight o'clock. But the one piece I want to close out to that yeah. I don't think we mentioned is that um, the parents, the the kids out there who have parents that are seniors. I have several friends that are in this situation. This is an opportunity for you. This is a, a great program for convenience when you are trying to do things by coastal or you're working and you don't have the resources and you need to do something quickly for mom or dad or, you know, auntie, uncle, whoever else, grandparents. Yeah, we can get so them the most money. Program that will. Thank yeah. you, darling. What's that, Rowena? Yeah, we can get them. We can get the kids and the parents the most money. Thank you guys for listening today. Thank you so much, Renee, over in California. Thank you, Mike. I know I'm in a lot of trouble. Thank you, Ruth. We'll see you on the radio <laughs> next week. AssistedLivingCPO.com for more this info. This has the Plain English Real Estate Show with Rowena Patton. Visit Rowena and post your questions at RadioAsheville.com or call her at 828-210-1648.